Hi everybody, my name is Heather. And I'm Alex. And we're here with another Plant Fact Friday. As you may know, it is Latinx Heritage Month from now until October 15th. And in honor of this month, we want to celebrate one of our favorite garden guests that visits us from Mexico every year, and that is the monarch butterfly. So one fun fact that I can show you right here with our little education specimen is how to identify a male monarch versus a female. So male monarchs are known uh, because they have a dark black spot on their hind wing, and the females do not. So we can tell that this bottom one it is a male because it has that black spot, while the top one is a female. So, little fun fact, next time you're out in your garden, you can know which is a male and a female. So, we have been seeing a lot of monarchs coming through Iowa recently, and Alex is gonna tell us why that is. So, we picked the monarch this week because we have been seeing a lot of monarchs here in central Iowa, and that is because we are in the peak season of their fall migration going south to Mexico. And the way that they're able to do this is they use a lot of environmental cues like the magnetic fields and the sun's direction to find their overwintering places. Butterflies you see here in central Iowa will overwinter, overwinter in the Sierra Madre Mountains of central Mexico, where monarchs in California will overwinter in southern California also. So using these environmental cues, they're going to find their overwintering places. Heather's going to tell us a little bit more about why this migration is so special and how the monarchs make this incredible journey even cooler. So as Alex mentioned, uh, the monarch migration is particularly interesting because it happens over the course of multiple generations. So that means that the monarchs that leave those mountains in Mexico are not the same ones that will return. Instead, it's their great-grandchildren or even their great-great-grandchildren. But somehow, they use those environmental cues to find their way back. It's really amazing. So I have a map here that we can look at. Uh, the monarchs that leave Mexico will only make it a couple hundred miles north, and they live for maybe five to seven weeks before laying eggs and passing the torch to the next generation, which will continue moving northward, maybe making it to Iowa, Missouri. And then another generation will take them as far north as they go, which is um, the southern part of Canada. And then the amazing thing, which we're seeing happening now, is the next generation has a huge journey ahead of it because it goes all the way from the far northern range to those overwintering grounds. So this generation lives much longer. It lives for up to eight months and it travels over 3,000 miles. So truly unbelievable. So when we see these monarchs on their way south right now, you know that they're in the middle of a really incredible journey. So Alex, when we see these butterflies, what should we be thinking about if we wanna help them along? So one of the most important things we can do for these monarch butterflies is to provide them food and resources uh, during the summer months. So, and the best thing to do for them is to plant these milkweed, which is the Asclepius genus. This is common milkweed that we have here. And this is the only food source for the monarch caterpillar. So a monarch traveling north in the summer months will lay its eggs on the milkweed. The caterpillar will hatch and eat the leaves of this milkweed. And then as Heather said, the next generation will fly forth. But what's really cool about the milkweed, and we have lots of different kinds here in the savanna, is milkweed has this sticky latex substance inside of it that you can see there. This is actually toxic to predators of the monarch. So their caterpillars eat this plant, ingest this toxic substance. It's not toxic to them, but just to their predators. So that's why uh, birds and other predators of the monarch try to avoid them because it makes them sick or have an upset stomach. So that's one way you can help the monarch is to plant um, this milkweed. And you can see here, we have some seed pods forming on the milkweed. So it's also important to spread those seeds um, in the fall after those are ready and bursting open. Those seeds you might have seen last week get dispersed by the wind in our previous Plant Fact Friday video. Heather, how else can we help the monarch butterflies? So uh, if you have the space and are so willing, you might even consider planting a butterfly garden. So this is a garden that not only has host plants like the milkweed, where they can rear their young, but it also has nectar plants for food and a source of water. 
And a good little tip if you want to make a water source for insects like butterflies and bees um, is to have a shallow dish, put some rocks in there, some pebbles, and then every time you're watering your garden, just fill that dish so that the insects can get a drink of water without having to worry about being submerged. Um, you can also participate in different citizen science projects. So these are things that we as citizens can do uh, just while we're out enjoying nature to actually help scientists monitor monarch migrations and they can use that data to maybe um, notice trends from year to year. So you can uh, make observations and record those in places like Monarch Watch and Journey North. These are both websites. Or you could even check with your local uh, county conservation boards and see if there's any monarch tagging events happening uh, in the near future. So thanks for joining us this week. We hope you learned a little bit more about the monarch butterfly and their incredible journey for Latinx Heritage Month. And we hope to join us uh, next week for Plant Fact Friday. Thanks for watching. Bye.